Hello, everyone. We're here to talk about the newest advances in air cooling. I know, I know. What's there to know? Air comes in this way and leaves this way and cools down your system in the process. And make sure your system doesn't melt. So, got it. And we're done, right? Not so fast there, hot stuff. There are a lot of limitations with traditional air cooling, like the need for thermal pads, cold plates with heat pipes, direct chassis conduction, and that's just the beginning. <laughs> Phew, is it getting hot in here, or is that just my brain overheating? <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Traditional airflow convection solutions have worked for a long time, but it may be time to find a different way to cool our systems using air. My guest today is Zach Galbraith from TE Connectivity. And we're talking about using thermal bridges instead of those old school thermal pads, how thermal bridges work, and why you want to use them in your next high performance computing, wireless, or comms design. All right, let's get started. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about TE Connectivity's Thermal Bridge Solutions. Hi, Zach. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, absolutely, Amelia. Thanks for having me. Okay, let's get the lay of the land first. What kinds of solutions does TE traditionally offer in the I.O. space? TE is a pretty big player in the I.O. space, ranging from products like SFP, XFP, all the way up through QSFP, DD, and QSFP56. Primarily, TE has been focused on a riding heat sink, which is an additional component that sits on top of an I.O. cage. And as thermal challenges and heat continue to rise in these I.O. applications, TE's dug very deep into research development associated with those riding heat sinks, looking at the interface between the I.O. module and how that riding heat sink actually sits on top of an I.O. cage and investigating some proprietary finishes and a lot of unique geometries on fin design and fin pitch to really optimize a product that's going to be best for a customer application. But traditional airflow cooling has its limits, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. As we start to reach the limits of those traditional airflows, customers are starting to look into fixed cooling applications, which brings on its own unique set of challenges. There needs to be a really efficient and a very effective mechanism to start to transfer heat from an I.O. cage to a fixed cooling application, which includes things like liquid cooled cold plates, ganged heat sinks, or remote radio head units where there is no airflow that can cool an I.O. port. And customers traditionally have been using gap pads or tin materials to bridge that gap. All right. So people have been using gap pads, but what are the challenges there? One of the biggest challenges that customers face with using a gap pad or a tin material is it requires heavily on compression to get the desired level of thermal performance necessary in customer application. Gap pads and tin materials are heavily reliant on compression and compressive forces to really whoosh down, for lack of a better term, the tin material to get a better thermal resistance value. In doing so, the material tends to relax over time, and it's a one-time use product. So if a customer needs to service or do some maintenance on their application, the gap pads need to be replaced. Okay, so tell me about this thermal bridge. So what TE did, in the simplest form, it created a mechanical version of this gap pad, which takes a lot of the downside of gap pads and really reduces those for customer application. It provides superior thermal resistance and doesn't rely on high levels of compression necessary to achieve desired thermal performance. In addition to the improved thermal performance, it offers better reliability and durability by giving a consistent thermal performance over time with a wear resistant elastic compression design that will not set or relax. It also provides consistent compression force with internal spring mechanisms between a cold plate or fixed cooling device and the IO plug. It also allows customers ease of serviceability and a simpler architecture and simpler line card design. It lasts longer than traditional thermal technology. It reduces component replacement and overall component count of a line card and is going to be there to last. Okay, so can we go back to the comparison you had between the thermal bridge and the thermal pad? 
Can you give me some more detail about that? Yeah, absolutely. As mentioned, the thermal pad really relies on compression and compressive forces to achieve the necessary and required thermal resistance properties. The thermal bridge does not rely on that. It is relatively independent of the compression and compressive forces needed. With that, we're able to provide an improved and consistent thermal resistance across the product and across an application. There's low and consistent compression forces. It's resistant to wear and its elastic compression does not take a set or relax over time. Again, it is reusable and there's no need to replace the product as a particular application needs to be serviced or any maintenance required. All right. Can we take a look under the hood at this thing? Yeah, absolutely. How the thermal bridge works, the TE engineering team did a really nice job of coming up with a really unique and proprietary design to TE. What it is, is basically a series of independent plates held together by an external frame with an integrated mechanical spring that gives one millimeter of compression travel and it comes pre-assembled on a cage. So why are you stacking so many plates on the thermal bridge? Couldn't it be just solid on each side? One of the values that we're able to see with the number of plates is getting a bit of a piano keying effect. It really allows for a lot of compressibility and a lot of conformability to different surface roughnesses, different surfaces, all while maintaining really good contact with both a plug module and a fixed heat sink application. So it gets a little bit difficult to really dig into the details and understand how the thermal bridge works on screen. But the best way to really understand and appreciate what the thermal bridge can offer is to get your hands on some of the samples that we have available through Mauser. Okay, so how well does that work? Well, we have a lot of test data that we've done on some traditional thermal pads that we've seen in the market, looking at a 3 watt per meter Kelvin and a 5 watt per meter Kelvin gap pad in comparison to the thermal bridge. As the data shows, thermal bridge is relatively independent of compression and compressive forces needed to get that really superior thermal resistance value that customers are looking for today. We have a lot of test data on two lead out form factors in our SFP product as well as our QSFP DD product and can get a little bit more granular as needed into some of this data if a customer needs to be. Can I see this in action? Yeah, absolutely. We actually have a live demo that we've been able to bring to customers, bring to trade shows, so engineers are able to see the performance live in front of them. It's really easy to put a lot of impressive figures and a lot of numbers up on a PowerPoint that can get people excited, but when an engineer can actually see it in front of them, try to change some of the parameters, some of the compression values, and see how the performance change, it really becomes very impactful to what the thermal bridge can offer. So, Zach, do you have another application example? We do. Another application where the thermal bridge can really add a lot of value to a customer is in a 5G remote radio head unit. This is another live demonstration that, again, we're able to bring to customers, bring to trade shows to show live performance data on how the thermal bridge is able to perform under a direct-to-chassis conduction, which is no internal airflow application. And you can see the data and the superior performance and the superior T-Rise that the Thermal Bridge is able to offer. So what kinds of products do you have available right now? Currently, we've led out with our primary I.O. form factors that we see a lot of traction in the market today in SFP, SFP DD, QSFP, and QSFP DD. These four form factors, we are in full volume production today. But we've been able to really figure out the recipe and figure out the manufacturability of this thermal bridge. And we're able to really platform this into other adjacencies that customers may see. So what if I want more information? TE has the lead out form factors. We have the customer prints available on TE.com. And we can certainly provide samples per request for whatever the customer may be. Here's some snapshots of the SFP and QSFP DD. And both of these can be found on TE.com. More information available as needed. So Zach, where are you seeing the thermal bridge being used out in the world? Primary markets we're looking at today is anything in data communications and wireless 5G rollouts. We've got a lot of lead out customers and applications looking at high performance computing. Ethernet switches, 5G wireless remote radio head units, servers, and Ethernet service provider routing. Is everything you offer single port? No, actually, we, we're able to provide single as well as gang ports. Part number list here, we have a 1x4 and a 1x6 ganged QSFP28 available. We can also incorporate the thermal bridge designs on stacked configurations as well. So again, 
we've been able to do a really nice job of platforming the thermal bridge design itself and can really apply that to any kind of ganged stack configuration that a customer may ask for. Very cool. I'm going to click that link and go to a mauser.com page for more information. But I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Zach. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Absolutely, Amelia. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about TE Connectivity's Thermal Bridge Solutions. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.